Hello everybody, my name is Henry Lee and in today's video we'll be looking at two very nice studies. Um, the first study as you see in front of you here is kind of known as the Saavedra position and it's a very famous sort of study and with a very nice ending. Now, if you haven't seen the Saavedra position before, do pause this video and try and figure out how white can win this game. Okay, so firstly, um, the obvious attempt of c7 trying to, promo uh, to promote this pawn doesn't quite work because black has the move bishop d4 check. And unfortunately for white, this move manages to draw the game. Um, because black will get checks on the king and get enough counterplay to stop the c7 pawn. Uh, for instance, you know, king b7, rook b5 check, and uh, this position is a draw. Now, so this obvious attempt doesn't work. So what does work then? Now, again, pause the video. Okay, I assume you have done that. And rook e1 is the strongest move. Now, obviously, black only has one move, king a2. If black goes king b2, then c7, and there is no bishop d4 check. So happy days. Um, but king a2 is obviously the strongest move. Um, and here, white sacrifices an exchange to get to kind of the most common version of the Saavedra position, uh, which is this position in front of you right here. And if you haven't seen this position before, it's a very nice sort of study. Um, it's a forced win for white, and try and find that forced win um, from this position. So obviously here, the kind of only move here for white is c7. Any other move will allow black to sacrifice um, the rook for the pawn on c6. Um, with, you know, rook d6 pinning the pawn, or rook c5 if white allows it. So c7 is the only move. And the only move here for black is rook d6 check. Any other move allows us to promote. Very easy. Now white must go up, because if he goes back, and rook d7 will pin the pawn and win the pawn. So king b5 is the only move. The, um, what's wrong with king c5? Rook d1 is the problem where black relies on this skewer with rook c1 to save the position. And that position is a draw. Therefore, king b5 is the only move. And black continues in this sort of same logic of checking white. And if white steps to the c-file, black uses this sort of skewer trick to draw the game. Or even in this case, win, um, if white goes too far forward. However, white keeps marching up the board. Black uses the same idea, so white cannot go to c3 because of rook d1 check. So white goes um, to b3 instead. And after rook d3, it simply looks like white is winning after king c2. And there's not much more to this position. Um, but, what, uh, but black has sort of a last resource um, that he can sort of use. And it's a very clever move. And try and figure out what the clever move is by pausing the video. Okay, so the move is rook d4. And the reason why this is very clever is because if white promotes to a queen, then the idea of black is to play rook c4 check with a fork. And the only move is queen takes c4, leading to stalemate. So very nice stalemate defense. And for many years, this position sort of has thought to be sort of a draw because of this resource. But at some point, people realize that here white is still winning. And this is your final chance to pause this position and try and find the winning continuation for white. So the winning continuation for white is the surprising move promote, uh, promoting to a rook. Now, usually, obviously, king and rook against king and rook is a very easy draw. But in this case, the geometry of the pieces simply wins for white. Um, we can see how this works. Now, firstly, white is threatening rook a8 checkmate. Um, and the only move to prevent that is rook a4. And here, white has the very clever move, king b3. And this king b3 is sort of a fork, because it's attacking the rook, and it's also threatening checkmate on c1. And actually, there's no way for black to do anything about this. The game is simply over here. Um, and that is sort of the very nice Saavedra position. 
And sort of the most famous version of this position comes um, comes from this position here, and not um, this position. But it kind of leads to the same thing. Now we'll move on to our next and final study. This is a very nice fortress, as you can see here um, by the title. And I suspect that more of you will not have seen this one before. So I do urge you to pause the video and try and find a way for white to draw this position. Because obviously this pawn is doing a runner, so you have to be very careful here. Okay, so the, white, the way white can draw this position is by a very clever sequence of moves. First, white goes knight c6. Um, so kind of threatening to take the pawn on d4 and then going g4 to trade off black's last pawn. So black has to go d3. Kind of the only real try for um, the win. And we, can, we can't really catch this pawn with this knight, unfortunately. Uh, but we have a very, very clever defense available to us which is we actually take the bishop. So black goes d2, obviously. And now we have the very nice move knight b5, allowing black to queen, which obviously black does. And then very calm knight c3. And we can see why this move is so clever. If black queen moves anywhere else, uh, besides giving this check here, for instance, black queen goes to e1, then we simply put our knight on e4, and we've actually trapped this black king from ever escaping. All of these squares are covered by the white pieces. Therefore, black does not have enough here, and in, and in fact, um, black needs to be even careful about you know g3, uh, which would be checkmate if this queen was not on e1. So therefore, black needs to go queen d6 check. But now white simply goes king h1. Very clever, sidestepping the check. Um, obviously g1 is horrible because black has forks at his uh, disposal. Um, but after queen d6, king h1, black has no check on d1, black has no checks anywhere else. And the other clever thing about this position is that black cannot prevent knight e4, which would trap the king as you know. Because if the king tries to escape to any of these squares um, on g5 or on g3, it just so happens that we have knight e4 check picking up the queen. So that's very unfortunate. So black needs to sort of move his queen out of the way. But it doesn't really matter anymore because after knight e4, we've again trapped the black king um, in a box, right? Of g5, g4, g3, and h3. Um, and the game ends in a draw, because black will not be able to make any progress. So, a very nice fortress sort of study. Um, maybe a surprising idea as well. Um, but very nice nonetheless. Um, that will be about it for today's video. Uh, but I thank you all for listening, and I hope you um, solve these positions. Or at least the second one, if you've seen the Saavedra one already. Um, but thank you guys.